Hey, you. Welcome back. The next book I read in the summer of 2024 was Cryptonomicon, Neil Stevenson's 1999 speculative fiction epic and the precursor to his 2003 and 2004 three-volume Baroque cycle. I'd actually read the first two volumes of the Baroque cycle before learning that Cryptonomicon was even involved. I really failed to do my research beforehand on this one. So I went ahead and went back to read Cryptonomicon before I eventually proceed to the final volume of the Baroque cycle. This is a sprawling, highly ambitious novel that intertwines multiple plot threads from different time periods in a 900-page narrative mixing historical and science fiction and centering on the hunt for a cache of gold stolen by Axis forces, particularly German and Japanese forces, during World War II. The plot occurs in two distinct threads, one that takes place during World War II and the other taking place in the late 1990s. During the war, we follow the brilliant mathematician Lawrence Pritchard Waterhouse, as well as the rugged Marine Sergeant Bobby Shafto, as they become embroiled in the Allies' counterintelligence efforts to break the codes created by the German Enigma machine. This historical thread is so incredibly meticulously detailed, and it focuses on the tense and frantic race to outsmart the Axis powers. Then in the 1990s timeline, we meet Randy Waterhouse, Lawrence's grandson, who is a computer expert working on a digital currency project. This Modern storyline takes a look at the development of data havens and the use of cryptographic methods to create an untraceable, non-taxable currency. Randy's project becomes entangled with his grandfather's wartime efforts, and this leads to a gripping convergence of past and present in the book's climax. This is perhaps a little bit of a spoiler, but one of the standout characters in the novel is Enoch Root, a seemingly ageless figure who appears not only in both timelines, but in the Baroque cycle as well. Root's wisdom and his mysterious nature make him a truly awesome character who adds depth and intrigue to every scene he's in, and he plays a pivotal role in the unfolding events. I'm actually glad I'd read some of the Baroque cycle first because it was a real bizarre treat when this familiar character from the 1600s shows up inexplicably in the 1900s. Stevenson's exploration of cryptography is truly fascinating, if not just a bit abstruse. The book dives into the mathematical intricacies of code breaking and encryption and it presents ideas that range from accessible to way over my head. Though the creative ways in which Stevenson incorporates these complicated concepts into the plot are really impressive and thought-provoking. Themes of conspiratorial secrecy, the convoluted flow of information and the ethical implications of technology are found all throughout the novel as characters struggle to find a balance between security and freedom. The enduring impact of historical events on the present is also explored and Stevenson's portrayal of these themes is nuanced and compelling as he reflects on the parallels between wartime and modernity. Cryptonomicon has moments of sheer craziness, long passages about the production of soft palate destroying cereal and the extraction of wisdom teeth come to mind. It's an encyclopedically detailed and surprisingly intellectual novel that I think rewards patience. And despite its occasional 
overindulgent aside, its impressive mix of history, tech, and continent-hopping adventure makes it a highly engaging read, especially given its girthy page count. Stevenson's ability to craft a story that spans decades and dives into ridiculously complex subjects while remaining interesting and exciting is a real testament to his skill as a writer. It's certainly quite an undertaking, but if you're willing to invest the time, Cryptonomicon is well worth it. In my 2024 tier ranking, I place Cryptonomicon right here between the first Murderbot book and the Perry family saga. It's definitely a well-realized and impressively well-crafted novel, but strictly in terms of my enjoyment, it gets edged out just a tad by the Perry family-focused books of the Old Man's War series, mostly due to the strong characterization in these novels, which is frankly stronger than pretty much any characterization there is to be found in Cryptonomicon. Regardless, it's almost certainly my second favorite Neil Stevenson work right behind Seven Eves. A really great book that I really liked a lot. If you have read Cryptonomicon, I would love to discuss it with you. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.